Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today we're looking at planetary alignments for 2013. Now I'm using SimSolar, which is the software that the Bark Roller used to use in his original planetary alignment Earthquake Watch videos. As I've said in my earlier videos uh, about SimSolar, this program is not very accurate, um, obviously because to start with it uses circular orbits and the orbits in reality are elliptical not circular. Um, also the fact that if you're trying to draw alignments on a chart that's not to scale well they're not going to be accurate anyway because all the distances between the planets are going to be quite different. Um, obviously all the orbits are not evenly spaced as you see here. I can show the orbits to scale and you can see that everything changes completely. The other thing to note is that the planets are not shown to scale, the planet sizes, and neither is the Sun. I can show the planets to scale. Um, this brings the, the planet relative planet sizes to scale, um, but again the Sun is not to scale. If I bring the Sun into scale, then obviously it dwarfs all of the other planets. Okay, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to look at alignments approximate alignments for 2013 using the built-in alignment finder in SimSolar. So this is the alignment finder. Okay, I can select various settings. Uh, the default, default value or tolerance is 2 degrees. I've set this to 1 degree because uh, I think if we're looking for true alignments we need to keep that fairly tight. I can se select uh, alignments between the Earth and other planets or I can select for uh, alignments between the Sun and other planets including the Earth. Um, now please note that these alignments would need to be checked in more accurate software such as Starry Night Pro, um, but as I say this will give us a bit of an idea of, of what's happening in 2013. Okay, I'm going to run the alignment finder. The start date I've set it to is 31st of December 2012, so we're just at the end of last year. And um, as I progress the, the dates forward, you'll see the alignments um, populating the list here, and you'll also see these red lines appearing on the, um, on the chart here. So let's go from 31st December 2012, progressing through January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December. Okay we'll stop it there. So these are the alignments uh, between the Earth and other planets, not including the Sun. So as you can see on the 8th of January 2013 it shows an alignment between the Earth, Mercury and Pluto. Please remember that when you're looking at the list here it will not uh, list the Earth in this part of the, the list because it's shown up here. Okay, So as you can see we've got a lot of alignments. Now this is at 1 degree. If I set the tolerance to 2 degrees, we will have a lot more alignments. OK, so I'm going to um, clear the list. Um, and we're on the, I'll take it back to the 30, well, I'll take it back to the 1st of January 2013. And this time we're going to look at alignments involving the Sun and other planets. So here we go from the 1st of January 2013. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Here we go. So once again we've got a lot of alignments between the Sun and other planets. So for example here you see the Sun, 
um, Mars and Neptune. Um, just look at some random ones, that other one there, that was a good one. That's Sun, Venus, Mars and Uranus. And again I do point out that you would need to double check these in an accurate program such as Starry Night Pro. Now the other thing to note is that um, these alignments show either alignments with the Sun or the Earth, but they do not include alignments between um, other planets not involving the Earth or involving the Sun. For example, if this was, if these orbits were to scale, we can see that Jupiter, Earth, and Saturn appear to be in line. Well, they aren't because the orbits aren't to scale. But let's say they were, Jupiter, Earth, and Saturn. Um, and I've just said not including Earth, so we'll have to pretend that that's another planet. Let's say it's Venus. If this was an alignment between Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn, it would not appear in the list because it does not involve the Earth or the Sun. Okay, so as you can see, we've had two very long lists of planetary alignments for 2013. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that 2013 is anything unusual. If I did this for 2012, it would look much the same, and any other year would look much the same. The reality is, is that there are planetary alignments all of the time. So, you know, if you want to make predictions about earthquakes based on planetary alignments, well, you've got a bit of a task on your hand because um, they're actually happening all of the time. Not all of the time, but regularly. Okay. The other thing is that we haven't factored in is alignments between um, the Sun, the Earth, and the Moon, which happen, of course, twice every month. We have an approximate alignment between the, the Sun, the Moon, and the Earth at New Moon, and we have an alignment between the Sun, the Earth, and the Moon at Full Moon, and they are separated by two weeks. And then to add to that, when we have a total solar eclipse or a to total lunar eclipse, we actually have a direct alignment. Um, now, if planetary alignments could cause earthquakes, then I would fully expect there to be massive earthquakes, catastrophic earthquakes, every new moon and every full moon, um, but more so during total solar or lunar eclipses when the Sun, the Moon and the Earth are actually in a directly straight line unlike during full moon or new moon. Um, now we know that the Moon does have a strong gravitational effect on the Earth because we see the ocean tides uh, rising up every day and billions or trillions of tons of water are being shifted around the planet every day. So we do know that the Moon has a strong gravitational effect on the Earth, and so does the Sun. So, if the planets could cause earthquakes, if planetary alignments could cause earthquakes, then certainly the strong gravitational influence of the Moon should cause devastating earthquakes every full Moon, and every new Moon, and certainly every eclipse, and we just don't see that happening. In fact, I've noticed, and I think it's just coincidence, but I have noticed that at new moon and full moon, often it's actually very quiet, which is interesting. But if you combine the gravitational influence of all of the planets in the solar system, added them all up together, there would actually be a very, very tiny fraction of that of the, the moon. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I'm going to be following planetary alignments during 2013 very closely. We've been discussing this on my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. If you're interested in joining us on that discussion, feel free to join uh, Vortex. I'll put a description, I'll put a link in the description area for you. Thank you for watching.